Jen, and Tech Jella too, and our host, Vincent Landau, and he brings it to you! <laughs> creature Features! Before there was ever a show called Star Trek, or a series called Space 1999, or even a movie called Star Wars, there was an interesting show which ran for three seasons on CBS called Lost in Space. It followed the story of the space family Robinson on an epic journey to explore the galaxy en route to their new home on Alpha Centauri. And one of the upgrade options on their starship, the Jupiter 2, was a clever and humorous robot. Tonight that robot, or one very much like it, We'll be joining us for tonight's show. Move aside. Robot approaching. Welcome to Creature Features. I'm your host, Vincent. The bubble-headed booby to my right would be the wonderfully dashing Mr. Livingston and the frightfully fashionless frump in the background who couldn't be bothered to join us for our program's preface would be my weapon-sanitizing ragamuffin, Tangella. Tell me, does she do this before or after she murders people? I've always wondered. As stated previously, we'll be joined by a wonderful robot who will chat with us about all things lost in space. And we might even have a few moments with his creator, Mr. Eric Yee. But I sincerely believe even Livingston will find the robot to be most entertaining. Indeed, I've already cleaned up a liter of hydraulic fluid from the floors. Hmm. And since we've only been allotted 30 minutes with tonight's guest, but occupy a two-hour broadcast time slot, we'll be filling in the gaps between our chin-wagging extravaganza with a splendid movie from 1968 entitled Destroy All Planets. Though some call it Gamera vs. Veros for some peculiar reason. That was the original release title. Nonsense. I do not speak Japanese and neither do you. Actually, he does speak fluent Japanese. However, when real Japanese people hear him speak, they giggle in delight because he does so with a heavy German accent. In any case, don't touch the channel down on your telly because it's going to be another night of robotical monster fright right here on Creature Features. Stay tuned. Welcome to Creature Features. It's that fun time of the week, you know, the one that you love, the one I love, because, you know, I get to see you and you get to see me. And you also get tonight to see the Lost in Space robot. Is this not wonderful? He's here in person with us. Hello, robot. How are you? Good evening. I am completely operational and all of my circuits are functioning perfectly. How was the trip up? I do not know. I must ask for a complete report of what transpired while I was deactivated. Where are we? We're at my home in the Poulter Mansion. For what purpose? We are taping a television program. Will I be on television? I enjoy being on television. Yeah, you're on television right now. I am glad to hear that. What? I hope you don't mind chatting with us. Affirmative. Wonderful. All right, well, we're going to be watching a very special film. It's 1968 called Destroy All Planets. Have you seen it? My computers have suddenly had a reaction. If you will excuse me, I think I am going to be sick. Oh, come on. It's not that bad. Just kidding. Very good. All right, 
Well, you guys, you stay with us. We're going to be right back, Robot and I, and uh, we're going to have some fun. You're going to have some fun, and it's going to be a great night, right? So, uh, Robot, do it. No. Oh, come on. Danger, danger. There you go. We'll be right back. Da, 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 da. I love that song, you know, it's the theme to, to Lost in Space and it's most appropriate for tonight because we've got the Robinson Robot with us. He is certainly the most largest, biggest guest I've ever had. I am extremely big. You most certainly are. I can lift very heavy things. I'm, I'm sure you can, but you know, I'm, I'm having a bit of an issue calling you like Robot. Can I, can I just call you Robbie? I am not Robbie the Robot. Well then, what's your official title? It is only me, the Robinson Robot. Well, but you must have had some official title before that. Robot Model D9, designed and computerized as a mechanized electronic aid for Earth voyagers engaged in astral expeditions. B9, that's a, you know, that's a, that's a, that's a nice name. Tell us your origin. Tell us how everything began for you. My mechanisms and body parts were created and assembled during the latter half of 1998 at the Cybernetics Research Facility in Windsor, California. My general physical architecture is based upon a design by Dr. Robert Kinoshita. My computers were designed by the Advanced Technology Group at Apple Computer Incorporated. Apple computer, that's that's rather impressive. What, so tell me, what do you think of the new uh, Apple TV channel? That, of course, does not compute. Well, I'm, I'm sorry to hear you feel that way. The word feel has no relation. So, let's talk about Dr. Smith. Would you like to hear my favorite sound? Sure. <laughs> that was horrid. So, how is the old bloke doing? Dr. Smith is quite well. While he is no longer the invertebrate he once was on board the Jupiter 2, he still is easily frightened by vacuum cleaners and physical labor. He also still enjoys insulting me. I, I, I know he used to call you some, some terrible names. What are some examples? Bubble-headed booby, nickel-plated nincompoop, motorized monstrosity, digital dunce. Shall I go on? No, no, that's, that's, that's fine, but that, that must have made you feel rather terrible. Negative. What worries me is when he is nice. A definite indication that he is up to no good. I imagine so. All right, well, I'm getting the signal we got to get back to our film, but uh, when we come back, we're going to talk some more about the Robinson robot and about Lost in Space and all that fun stuff. So you guys stay with us. I'm going to stay here, and the robot's going to stay with us as well. Don't go away. You could at least be courteous and offer me some motor oil. Of, of course. Livingston, uh, motor oil, please. Never fear. Livingston is here. Creature Features is brought to you by CreatureFeaturesStore.com, the official merchandiser of Creature Feature accessories. Welcome back to the show. We are still watching Destroy All Planets, and I'm with the Robinson Robots. One cowardly man and one brave robot. That's very funny. I have not been programmed for humor. 
All right. Well, last time we were discussing... Uh, attention! Attention! Alien approaching. Oh, that's not an alien. That's just Tangella. Don't mind her. She's here to do the mail segment, but we're going to do that a little bit later. You are my friend, but she does not compute. You know, you should be careful with her, should I say. Danger, Will Robinson. Will Robinson is not present, and my sensors detect no danger. Well, speaking of Will Robinson, what has he been up to these days? Will has been assigned to a space station called Babylon 5. We still correspond through email, though he did forget to send me a card on my birthday last year. She scares me. Oh, don't mind her. So, uh, what about the girls? How are they? Penny Robinson is alive and well, and operating a boutique in Toluca Lake, California. Judy Robinson is still, to this day, considered a babe. I liked Judy because she would often socialize with me. Hmm. The Prime Directive forbids taking human life, but I could certainly pinch you very hard. Tenchella, be nice to the robot. My goodness. So, what about the monkey thing that was on the show? Whatever happened to that? Debbie the Bloop now resides on Primate Island of the San Diego Zoo. I recently visited her, and she did not recognize me. She flung a cashew at me. Oh, my goodness. Well, I'll have to visit her next time I'm down in San Diego. So, what's it like traveling in space? Is this an interview or an interrogation? It's an interview, of course. Whatever. Your continuous banter is wearing out my power pack. My goodness. Well, we'll get you all plugged in and we'll get you recharged. All right. I think it's time we get back to the film. You guys stay with us and when we come back, we're going to talk some more with the Robinson robot and maybe even its creator, Eric Yi. Stay with us. Who turned out the lights? He looks so sad when he's charging. You know, she wore him out. I don't doubt it. He was fine it. until she came out and started harassing him. Yeah, you've got to be nice to at least non-humans. I mean, just consider it like a pet. It's like a metal pet. Actually, it's a guest. It is a guest, pet. Welcome back to the show. Um, Robot B9 is recharging. He'll be back soon once he's gotten up to three bars, I think, is what he needs. But uh, in the meantime, we're going to do letters because that's what we do, right? Indeed. That's what I do when you give them to me. So give me a letter. First letter is from Daniel Coughlin in Santa Rosa. We hear a lot from Santa Rosa. Is it because we're so close to it and our transmission signal is stronger? The force is strong here. The force is strong in Santa Rosa, but we're in Bodega Bay big difference all right he goes dear vincent love you guys i've been watching since the start S the start like when the beginning. hopefully not when i was showering this morning the start of the season the start of the series he does not say when something about the eye creatures seem vaguely familiar then i remembered it's a scene for scene remake of the 1957's invasion of the saucer men the only difference is Frank Gorshin's fine performance is missing. You know, we got a lot of letters on this. About Frank Gorshin? No, about the saucer men and the eye creatures being the same story. It's like, they don't do that. They, do, they used to do that in the 90s. Remember when we had the two asteroid films? No. Yeah, we had two, maybe three. Love the interview with Jackie Kong. Keep up the good work. She's a lovely guest. We're going to have her back again uh, next year, right? I believe so. Or she needs to make another movie, whichever comes first. All right, next up. This is from Melissa in Ohio, and she says, Hi to you all. That means all of you and the robot. I listen to old horror films like most people listen to music. I stumbled across your show on YouTube a few weeks ago, and it was love at first sight, or here as the case may be. 
Tangella reminds me of my oldest daughter in a good way. I bet your oldest daughter does not do nail polish on skeletal hands. Mr. Livingston has the most amazing voice ever. And Vincent is a handsome and interesting young man. <clears throat> well, you know, I think many would argue that I'm not interesting nor young, but I will take that compliment, Melissa, in Ohio. You also have some great guests. Never a dull moment unless it's in the movie. Keep up the great work, Melissa in Ohio. Well, thank you so much for the kind note, Melissa. You know, we try. We don't always succeed, right? But we try. That's what counts. A for effort. That's what we do here on Creature Features. Quite the effort, yes. All right, last letter. How are you, Tangella? Oh my goodness, she's busy. She's paying no attention to us. You need to do the robot's fingernails next. Wouldn't that be no? No, she, she does not like the robot. She would not do good on a sci-fi show, I don't think. All right, this one is from Tara in Fort Edward, New York. Fort Ed, do you think she actually lives in a fort? I have no idea. And it belongs to Edward? Who knows? All right, she goes, hello, Vincent, Mr. Livingston and Tangela. My name is Tara and I'm a huge fan of your show. I watch it late at night by myself. Well, that's sad. I suppose it's all right though. It's like you're watching a movie with us. So that's, you're not by yourself, you're with us. My favorite scary movies are mummies, werewolf and zombies. The city I live in is very quiet and relaxing. Well, you know, if you had mummies, werewolves, and zombies in your city, it would not be a relaxing place. Plus, it's a fort. I mean, I, I bet they're preparing for war of some kind, battle. Perhaps there uh, was. Maybe. Remember the Alamo. Who knows? That it? That would be it. That's it for mail. If you would like to send us mail yourself, you can use an email address that's appearing down by my shoe. Or if you'd like to send something in the post. We've not gotten anything in the post today, now have the we? The car was in the garage. Oh, that's what. All right, so uh, if you'd like to send us something in the post, send it to the address you see right here. That's it for now. When we come back, we're going to meet the creator of this B9 robot, Mr. Eric E. But right now, let's get back to our film. So you guys stay with us. Hey, Vincent and Tangerella. My name is Wayne. I'm from Mount Pleasant, Tennessee. I uh, just want to tell you, I finally got to flick you on for the first time. We used to watch Creature Features back in Detroit, and I'm glad to be able to find that these movies are back on. And uh, I have a 13-year-old that I can give her the experience of what we used to watch when we were a child. So uh, once again, keep up the good work, and I'm glad to see you. Bye. Portions of Creature Features are brought to you by The Winchester Mystery House in San Jose, California. Explore the mystery at winchestermysteryhouse.com. Welcome back to the show. Guess who we'll be joined by? Mr. Eric Yee, the creator of this thing. You know, I'm rather sad to see it all like discharged and charging up. Uh, how long is this going to take? Oh, sometimes 24 hours. Not to, yes. You know, we, we, we've only done a few segments with them. We need to do like more. You need to put them on the fast charge mode. No, it's not Energizer. Oh, it's not the you. Energizer bunny. So, Mr. Eric ye built this thing and ye, how long did it take you to make it technically it took me maybe about 25 years collecting all the parts no once you had all the parts i had all the parts it took me uh, i was getting it ready for uh for uh, monster palooza oh that's and, a great uh, show i understand and Yes, it is. It's, it was a one-stop monster shop right and i was getting that ready for that 
and it took approximately two, uh, excuse me, three, four weeks to put together. That's all. Well, that's not bad. A lot but of, of course, 25 tape. years to collect the parts. That's, that's a long time. Right. Um, the robots made several appearances uh, the past four or five years. Um, Lord Bloodraw in his nerve-wracking theater. Uh, I've never heard of him. No, I'm joking. <laughs> um, we know did, Lord Blood Raw. He did something at the uh, Chabot Space Science Center that uh, I, he uh, was a showing of uh, Forbidden Planet. And uh, he, oh. asked for, he asked for my robot. Well, that's a different it. robot now, isn't it? Other brothers, made by the same designer, Bob Kinoshita. Ah, so right, right. The Psychotronics Film Festival uh, has, uh, they show various short subjects, uh, cartoons. This is the one where they use actual film, right? Yes, a 16 oh, right, millimeter right. film. So you hear the clicky click sound behind you when you're watching these movies. So what do you do? You just show up with this robot and like barge in and say, the robot's here, danger, danger. Yeah, that's what everybody wants to hear. It's oh, like, nice. uh, danger, danger. And I bring the robot with me and uh, uh, make appearances for photo ops. And, uh, you know, people can get right next to him and, uh, you know, push his buttons and give him a little tickle there. But he's, uh, he's also been to the uh, East Bay Comic Con a couple of times. So have we. And but, you know, I've only seen it there once that last time we were there. And uh, the Ream Theater in uh, Moraga, uh, they, that's where we have our sci-fi days, or we used to. And uh, he would make appearances at a couple of the sci-fi days that we had there. So you, you're quite busy with this thing, but this is not like a business for you. You just do it for fun. Yeah, just a labor of a love, love. Right. So it's just like, and it's almost like your art. Yeah. It's like what you create with your palette. Yeah. All right, well, we're going to hear more about how you built this, why you built it, and all of that. But first, got to get back to this film, Destroy All Planets. Have you seen it? Oh, many times. Many times. All many right. times. Well, I don't feel so bad that you missed the commencement of it. So. All right, here we go. Back to Destroy All Planets. You guys stay with us because we're going to have more robot soon. You know, I think the Japanese make some of the finest films in the world. This is a perfect example. Yeah, this one should have been nominated for an Academy Award, I think. I could be wrong. Anyways, we're with Eric Yi, the maker of this B9 robot. Quite wonderful. He's charging still, but hopefully he'll be back to life in the next segment. But, you know, I have to ask you, why in God's name did you build this thing? I was three years old. My parents uh, babysat me by sitting me in front of the TV. And uh, I saw Lost in Space on our black and white TV. And I saw Will Robinson with the robot. I said, I want a robot. And now about close to 50, 55 years later, I, I put together you this did it. character. You did it. You're like, you're like Timmy with Lassie, except Lassie has got these giant red claws and can break things. That's wonderful. Well, you know, you're into lots of things. I understand you're a filmographer as well. And oh. you worked on a film that many of you may have seen, uh, Watch Horror Films, Keep America Strong. I was a, a cinematographer uh, for that, videographer, and uh, with Tom Worsh. And, right, uh, our director. And I got to go to all, talk to all these famous people, local people. That's wonderful. That I do with the show. And you've been on Creature Features prior to our incarnation. 1982 with John Stanley, I wore a monster suit, uh, original design called Grendelon. And, this is uh, something you designed. Yeah, it has big crab claws, tusks, big red eyes. Do uh, you have a, like, did you save this episode? Is it like on videotape somewhere? I think it's on Betamax, but really? I don't have a Betamax player. Oh, no. So hopefully maybe someday I could transfer it on Right, a no, that's, that's DVD. like, so you were quite young back then, right? I think it was about uh, 16 or 17. How fun. Creature Features here. He's a Creature Features alumni. 
And like he's just here like gracing us with a second appearance because it's like your encore performance. Sort of. All right. So uh, speaking of encore performances, uh, hopefully we can get this charged up and we can bring the robot back. And uh, thank you for bringing it, by the way. We appreciate it. Well, and you're welcome. The next robot oh. you build, I think you should do the one uh, number five, because number five's alive, right? Disassemble. Disassemble. Perfect. That, that one. You can do one. it. You can do it. All right. Thank you, Eric. And uh, right now, let's get back to destroy all planets. You guys don't go away. More robots soon. And that brings an end to tonight's film, Destroy All Planets, Gamera and the Boy Scouts Save the World, as always. I kind of knew that was going to happen. So, Robot, what did you think of the film? We have discussed this topic already. I, I know, but I, I think the audience would like to get your opinion on this film. As I have said already, I would rather not talk about it. All right, all right, well... Uh, enough about the film, enough about the film. So, wh what are you up to these days? Are you, like, flying around in the Jupiter 2? Negative. The Jupiter 2 spent many years in dry dock, but it has recently been restored and is now being used as a pleasure vehicle. My, that is a fine tunic you are wearing. I did not know that Kmart carried such fashionable clothing. You better be careful, robot. She'll pull your power pack. I am not programmed for babysitting. All right, well, so uh, what are you up to? Do you like watch sci-fi films? How about like Star Trek? You watch Star Trek? Resistance is futile. You will be syndicated. I have had the pleasure of meeting Lieutenant Commander Data. While he is a fine example of mechanical craftsmanship, I found that he was not nearly as handsome as I. He also lacks my wit and charisma. Have you noticed the striking resemblance between Seven of Nine and Judy Robinson? I have. No, I hadn't noticed, uh, but uh, that's wonderful. All right, well, thank you, Robot, for coming on the show and uh, entertaining us and our, our guests, and uh, we hope to have you on again soon someday. You are welcome. It was a pleasure meeting you. The pleasure was entirely ours. And as far as you guys are concerned, thank you so much for staying up late and tolerating me and the Robinson Robot and Tangella and all that. And uh, tune in next week. We're going to have a different guest, a different movie. I don't know what they are, but I'm sure they'll be quite fun. Have a wonderful rest of your week. So, uh, Robot, I had a thought. If you and I were to go to a convention, you could go as the Robinson Robot and perhaps I could portray Dr. Smith. I know Dr. Smith. I spent many years with him and can say with some authority that you, sir, are no Dr. Smith. <laughs>